Hello everyone and welcome to this lightning effect tutorial. Before I start I should mention that this is done without any plugins, but the only one I'll be using is Dipglow. Let's get into it. Now the first thing I want to do with this clip is track it. In my case I can get away with some 2D tracking, but if you need to 3D track it, go ahead and do so. I've got some tutorials on how to create that as well. I'm going to select my clip, select track motion, and let's select the dot here, for example this one, and hit track forward, create a new null object, select edit target and apply it to the null object hit apply and hit ok okay so this is the tracking done now i'm going to create a new solid and we'll call this lightning or just light and the effect we're going to be working with is called advanced lightning the first thing we're going to do is parent it to the null object that we apply the tracking data to and i'm going to actually scale my layer up to 110 in case the tracking is more aggressive and it goes off frame somewhere. So just to have like a safe frame, this is what I'm going to do. Now let's go into the glow settings here and change the opacity to zero. I don't want any of that glow. And I'm going to go into my core settings here and change the color. You can do whatever you want to. I'm going to choose light blue. Okay. And the lightning type, I'm going to change from direction to two way strike. And this is just two dots creating a lightning between them which is pretty easy to control. And always keep in mind that there's a bunch of settings here to play with, like the forking, the turbulence, if you want to add some more details or whatever. So have a play with those. Now I'm going to set two points here. So from the mirror to this wall, for example, and set a keyframe for my conductivity state on the very first frame, move to the end and set it to one. So this just gives it some life between the frames. And now if you want to have continuous lightning like this one, yeah, you can go ahead and do that, but you do need to track the other point so it sticks to the wall. Or in this case, we can set a keyframe for the direction and make sure it sticks to the wall. So this is just a quick fix for this specific shot. But in our case, I want to have the lightning sort of randomly appearing and striking from the car to somewhere in the frame. So in order to do that, we're going to set a keyframe for the origin and direction. Hit U to bring these up. Now let's go somewhere around here. Now I'm going to move a few frames forward, set a keyframe, go one frame forward, and I'm going to change the position of my lightning. So for example, from here to here, copy these keyframes, a few frames forward, paste them, go one frame forward and change the direction. So basically we're having the lightning appear in different positions with a single keyframe over time. Now I'm gonna quickly create a few of these. Okay, so I just went ahead and positioned the lightning in different positions as you can see, but it's still alive for the whole duration. The way we can do this is simply hold shift, make sure the layer is selected and hit T for opacity. And I'm gonna set a keyframe on my second frame here. Set a keyframe to 100, go back one frame, set it to zero. And we can move a few frames forward and set it back to zero. So if you want it to live more or less, you can just play around with the opacity here. And basically this is what we've got. So it just strikes and slowly fades out. Now we're just gonna copy these keyframes here and make sure they are aligned where the position is changing. So if we play this back, this is what we've got. Okay, this is already looking cool. Now, in order to add some detail on where the lightning is hitting, we need to add sort of like a reflection or a glow. Now I found an easy way to do this by duplicating the lightning effect. Let me go ahead and solo it. And if we go into the decay here and set it to five and select decay main core, you can see it sort of kills the connection between them and just leaves these two small areas on where the lightning starts and ends. Now, if I go into my core settings, I can increase the core radius, let's set it to 15 and bring the opacity to 100. Now I'm going to add a fast blur to this, set it to horizontal and let's set this to about 10. Now duplicate this one and we'll set this to vertical and maybe set it to 20. Now, as you can see, it's sort of fading out. To bring this back, we can add a curves effect. Go into my alpha channel here and by boosting up the alpha channel, we're basically bringing it sort of back. Now let's unhide this and set the layer to additive. And as you can see, we got these nice sort of glowing areas on where the lightning appears. This actually might be too strong. Now I'll go into my main layer here and add my deep glow. 
and let's just decrease the exposure a bit. And I'm going to duplicate this layer, make it 3D, and rotate the x-axis a bit. And I'm going to bring it down sort of like so. And I'm going to add a fast blur to this and just blur it out. I'll actually add a transform to bring down the opacity since we do have keyframes here. So I'll be using a transform. Let's bring it down to about 30. And this sort of gives us this fake reflection on the floor. Now, depending on your shot, you might need to sort of mask it out. So for example, here, it should be reflecting behind the car. So you're gonna have to sort of rotoscope this area and make sure the reflection is sort of behind it. Yeah, this is basically how I created this effect. Pretty easy to make. Hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.